branch instructions so what is branch instructions branch instruction is read the register operand so the value that is stored into uh, registers and compare the uh, compare the value inside the register so we uh, to, uh, to make the comparison we need the help of the alu because those two values will be subtracted and check zero for outputs if they are zero that means the, uh, those two values are equal and if they are other than zero then they are not equal so for zero that means the branch will if the condition uh, is to branch when the values are equal then we need to consider the zero output if the condition is to branch when the values are not equal then we need to check the va uh, values uh, when they or, or consider the values when they are not equal that means the output is not zero of the alu once we, we decided to branch then we need to sign extend the display displacement that means the offset or the uh, constant that we have so we we, we need to uh, uh, make it sign extended because we all know that branching that means branch in uh, by the way in in this case the branching that we are discussing are i type branching which means branch equal to or branch not equal to so in that case uh, we have the value which is 16 bit so we need to make it 32 bit but the, uh, we, before we make it 32 bit, we need to make it sign extended as well as uh, for word displacement, we need to left shift uh, by two places and put two zeros in the uh, extreme uh, uh, LSB uh, positions uh, and add PC plus four. We all know that when we are uh, looking at the art type instruction or other type of instructions for sequential execution or any type of execution, program counter or the system thinks that the instruction execution will be sequential. That's why when the fetch stage, uh, during the fetch stage, program counter's value gets incremented by 4. That means it, be, it, it becomes PC plus 4. So no matter whether we need to execute sequentially or any branch instructions associated in in that uh, execution we need to add pc plus 4 with the offset branch offset and already calculate uh, by instruction page so uh, this is what it says that pc plus 4 which is already calculated by the instruction fetch uh, during instruction page so uh, in this diagram we see uh, the instruction is coming from the instruction memory. We see we have two uh, two uh, instruction uh, two registers are there. So two registers values uh, values are compared in inside the. Let's say we, we write an instruction. Probably that would be uh, much easier to explain. Uh, let's say B N E register ten register eleven and the and the label is. Uh, e L sorry uh, level is E L S C. So if these two are not equal, then go to else. This is the level. So how many registers do we have here? We have two registers. So we need two selectors, and they are going to be of five bits. They are going to be of five bits. So these two values, uh, these two links uh, will supply the value coming from register 10, uh, let's say data. And this this one uh, will be register 11 data. So these two data will be compared here. Uh, this is a ALU operation, which will be sub operation. And if it is branch, for example, a uh, to the branch uh, branch uh, logic that means we need to perform the branch operation and how uh, see else but this is we all know this is 16 bit value 16 bit offset so this 16 bit will come through this line and it will be sign extended and left shifted by 2 and then the 32 bit value will uh, uh, will go to this adder and we already have pc plus 4 here so this is our branch address which will go to the program counter and the next instruction after the branch will be fetched from the memory composing the elements till now we have seen data paths uh, for 
different different uh, instructions for example for r type instruction for i type instruction we did not see anything uh, of j type but we'll see it later but uh, we have seen instructions of uh, we have seen r type instructions we have seen uh, i type instructions but those data paths are uh, designed only to execute that particular instruction but we cannot have a system like that where we have data paths for executing individual uh, in instructions that would be less optimized we need to come up with an optimized design so that the same circuit can be used for any type of instruction this is what we are going to do now so the first cut data path does an instruction in one clock cycle we already have uh, have uh, discussed this that the initially we will be discussing a more simplified version which is single cycle data path where it is assumed that each instruction requires one clock cycle to execute and that clock cycle is decided based on the uh, the longest uh, instruction uh, duration longest duration that uh, any instruction takes uh, and uh, we know that load is going to take the longest uh, duration that's why the clock cycle is set or the clock period is set based on the time that load would require and then each then each data path element can only uh, do one function at a time that means in one clock cycle if we use one element for any particular operation then for similar operation we cannot use it again if we need a similar operation later then we need to have multiple copies of the same uh, same thing here we need separate instructions and data memories because uh, instruction memories are accessed when we are performing uh, 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 fetch operation again if we are performing memory operation that means load and store we would need data memory but we all know that instruction memories and data memories they are uh, assigned part inside the inside a common memory which is ram but in in case of single cycle data path we need separate physically separate instruction memory and physically separate data memory use of multiplexers or alternative data sources are used for different instructions we all we already have discussed that for example in case of add and add i in case of add two inputs are coming from the register file but in case of add i one input is coming from the register file and the other input is the sign extended version of the a, a constant that we used and that is going to come from different source that means we need to have a multiplexer where multiple inputs would come and based on the instruction type control unit would select which input to send to the output this is this is a data path for r type load and store data path we we, we see here that uh, we have a, a, a fetch and we have instructions memory uh, a, in in, uh, in in this part but we do we do not have a uh, shown it here because th this is where the main operations will will be uh, will be performed because instruction fetch is same for all the instructions so instruction comes here and then uh, we perform for in case of uh, add operation uh, that means r type instruction we have one destination and two two source register so these are the two source register and this is the destination register these two uh, these two links carries the data for uh, r type instruction and see we have discussed that if there is possibilities of multiple inputs coming in then we can use the multiplexer this is our multiplexer for add i one input will carry will go through this link and one input will carry uh, will come through this link which is 16 bit and it will be sign extended and 32 bit will go to the multiplexer for add control unit will select ALU select control unit in in this case if it is add then control unit will, uh, will select uh, will uh, control unit will send zero here because it is in multiplexer port zero for in case of add but if it is add i control unit will send one here which is this port so this port will go out now we have data data memory which is used for a data operation uh, when we are uh, performing a read operation or we are performing a write operation now we can see another multiplexer here see when we are performing add operation then we do not need uh, data memory 
but as i said that we need to come up with an optimized design so data memory will be there but we are not going to take the output coming from the data memory so the output for in case of add the output that is coming through this line will be selected so control in it will send zero in case of add and this input will go to the output and perform the write back operation when this is a load operation then alu will generate the memory address so this link will uh, give us the data for the destination register so control in it will now send one and this link will carry the data again for the right performing the write back operation this shows the full data path yes there is no jump instructions is here but this is uh, this is the full data path for performing r type and uh, i type instructions we do not have a separate control unit here but we have we have shown the control signals that we would need for a, for enabling different components or executing different instructions we have uh, so this this looks more more complete uh, we have program counter then instruction memory then register file and we have alu and data memory this part uh, performs pc plus 4 and this part uh, this part uh, performs pc plus 4 plus the sign ex uh, addition of the sign extended uh, uh, offset value and multiplexer uh, in the multiplexer we have options of pc plus 4 and options of pc plus 4 uh, plus the branch offset so control unit decide which one to select similarly here we have uh, it could be memory address or when we are executing branch uh, or uh, executing load or store or it is a regular data when we are executing r type instruction and both data both the data are coming uh, one coming from the data memory and another coming from the alu to the multiplexer and control unit decides which one should go out and this is basically a, a, a data path for single cycle uh, R and I type instruction execution.